Hey there folks, Rel here. Today we'll be taking a hard look at the engineer's newest and most devastating tool, the anti-vehicle turret. This is going to be a lengthy guide with multiple elements involved because this weapon has a really high skill cap and uh, that essentially means that you can be good with this turret and you can be really really good with this turret and the better you are the more effective this tool will be in your hands. We'll start first with some basic statistics, then go into proper usage, then give you tips on control and placement, and then finally talk about some more specific strategies to take with you. The anti-vehicle turret is probably the most powerful infantry-based weapon in the game, capable of decimating enemy armor and infantry with precision accuracy from hexes away. I intend to show you how to get the most out of this beast of a weapon. To purchase the Mana Anti-Vehicle Turret, you'll need 700 Station Cash or 1000 Certs. The turret takes up your ability slot by replacing your standard Mana Turret, but both turrets may be active at the same time by using alternate loadouts for whatever good that will do you. As always, you can force your Ace Tool to give you an ammo pack instead of a turret by pressing B or whatever you have the alternate fire bound to. Unlike the standard mana turret, there is no frontal shield, and every faction in the game has the same poorly designed turret, which is essentially a bulldog slapped on a tripod. But it's a bulldog with a much cooler projectile. The AV turret fires a wire-guided missile that isn't affected by gravity, and bases its trajectory on where your crosshair is pointed, meaning you can make it do all sorts of fun curves and twirls. The AV turret will die in three knife swipes and withstand a good deal of small arms fire. This is good news for you though because with its deceivably large hitbox, it's still an excellent source of cover. The hitbox from a width standpoint actually extends beyond the model a good deal. Whether this is intended or not, I'm not really sure, but the barrel, however, has no collision or hit detection so you can actually clip right through it. When it's deployed, the AV turret is going to render at vehicle distance meaning enemies and other vehicles are likely going to see you before they see other infantry. A single tank round is usually enough to destroy your turret, but is likely to leave you unscathed unless they are using high explosive rounds. And if it is destroyed, or if you just feel like building a new one, there is a 6 second cooldown between placements. Aside from the cooldown, you can place the turret infinitely at no cost. There is a short delay after you place the turret before it comes into existence, about 2.5 uh, seconds, so it's best to seek cover while deploying. The AV turret does not utilize ammo, it instead uses a heat bar along the same lines as the standard mana turret. However, after firing a single rocket, you'll max out your heat bar and be subjected to the weapon's cooldown. At base rank, the AV turret can fire off a single shot every 6 seconds. Fully sorted, it will reduce this cooldown to 4.25 seconds, which may not sound like a lot from a number standpoint, but it is a massive, massive boost when it comes to actually utilizing the turret. This is the difference between a couple of engineers repairing a Sunderer through your damage and destroying it regardless. Speaking of Sunderers, the AV turret seems to deal the same damage on a direct impact as the standard faction rocket launcher does, so that's around 1700, but only to main battle tanks, lightnings, and flash ATVs. This means that any MBT will die in just two shots from the rear, four shots to a mag rider from the front will disable it, and five will put it out of its misery. Lightnings die in two or three shots depending on the placement, and flashes die in a single hit. What's really interesting is that the AV turret has additional armor penetration against Sunderers. Normally it would take a standard rocket launcher something like six shots to destroy one, but the AV turret will kill a Sunderer outright in four hits from any side. On the other side of the coin, ESFs and Liberators have a bit higher resistance to the AV turret and will die in 2 and 6 hits respectively. It's important to keep in mind how positional damage works in Planet Side 2. It doesn't actually matter where the rockets hit the target physically, it matters where it was fired from. In this example, you'll see that I'm hitting the back end of a mag rider by curving the rocket, but it's only being dealt damage as if I was hitting it from the side. An easy visualization is to imagine four triangles extending out from the center of a tank, forming a box. Depending on where you are in relation to this box is how the locational damage is translated to your target. Fortunately, killing infantry isn't quite as complicated. If you hit infantry dead on, it will kill them outright. They may survive if they have fully sorted flak armor, but they'll die in two hits without a doubt. 
There is some minor splash associated with this weapon, but it's really nothing to rely on. It does very little damage in a very small radius. Max units will also die in two direct hits from your AV turret. A couple more things to note is that when you leave the turret, your projectile will travel to where your crosshair was left when you abandoned it. This makes it very easy to fire and forget versus immobile targets to keep you out of harm's way. Now that we've gone over the basic statistics, I want to talk a little bit about controlling the turret. And this is not easy by any means, but it is very, very rewarding once you get the hang of it. The first thing you should probably know is that the AV turret kicks upwards slightly after firing, meaning you can't simply point and click on targets without at least a little bit of adjustment. To control this minor bit of kick, you can either readjust your sights after firing, or place the crosshair underneath your target so that the rocket will go where you originally intended it to go. This is generally something you'll do at closer ranges or when firing and forgetting, which is something we'll discuss later. Upon letting loose a rocket, you'll be staring at a bunch of flames and smoke, likely obscuring what you're trying to hit. The easiest way to avoid this sort of screen clutter is by firing the launcher first at an angle, then recentering your sights on the target as your rocket travels. This way you can see exactly what you're shooting at, and adding a little bit of curvature to your flight path actually allows you to estimate the rocket's current distance a little more easily. Another tip that I'll bring up again later with a, a bit more specificity is to mark your targets repeatedly so that you don't lose sight of them. Even if you can't really tell where the tank stops and the cliff begins, a red triangle will guide your rocket to victory. So those are all pretty easy, but here's where things get a little more interesting. Unlike the standard mono turret, you can't zoom with the AV turret. This makes it very difficult to control, especially at those maximum render distances you'll oftentimes fight at. Eyes on enemy aircraft. The only way to drop targets at such a distance is to stay accurate within a pixel, and if you have twitchy hands like me, then this is your biggest challenge. Fortunately, most gaming mouses have the ability to bind sensitivity functions. I'm currently using the Razer Diamondback, and when I hold down a thumb button, my sensitivity drops very low instantly giving me that pixel precision necessary to nail a target from a world away. I won't give you a tutorial on that, but it's pretty easy to look up online if you don't already know how to do it. I want to emphasize again that the difference between hitting something and not hitting something is a pixel's length when fighting from great ranges. Occasionally you may actually have to redeploy your turret slightly to the left or the right just so the target lines up properly on your screen. So if you do have a gaming mouse, I strongly, strongly encourage you to bind a sensitivity clutch to your keyboard or mouse if you plan on using the AV turret with any sort of dedication. But the most advanced principle of control would have to be curving the rocket. This is really where the high skill cap comes into play, and it's what separates a novice AV gunner from an expert. I'm nowhere near as good as I believe people will eventually become at being able to guide the rocket around corners and everything else, but regardless, there are some quirks you should know about. The AV rocket will always propel itself forward, so you can't make the thing uh, boomerang around and hit the guy standing next to you, but you can affect its trajectory a great deal. So I'm going to kind of play a guessing game here. The rocket seems to fly toward where your crosshair is current. The rocket seems to fly toward what your crosshair is currently hovering over opposed to where the crosshair is in relation to your screen. This is what makes it so easy to nail any target you can see. If the rocket was guided in relation to your screen, you'd have to lead any and all of your targets a great deal, just so you can make the rocket turn enough to hit them. And without getting any more confusing than that, this is why it's important. If you're trying to hit an enemy that is behind cover, it is really, really hard. Because even if you're trying to curve the rocket, if your crosshair is on something that's closer to you, or that the rocket has already passed, the rocket isn't going to do a 180 and come toward what you're pointing at. So at this point, the rocket decides to kind of get dumb, you know, slow, annoyed that you're telling it what to do, and you can't really influence its direction much, if at all. The solution to this is to make a wide curve before you get to the target, then overestimate the angle of what you're trying to hit so that the rocket turns sharply into the target. 
and this probably sounds really confusing and honestly it was actually difficult for me to type the script up while trying to uh, make sense at the same time but here's an example that will hopefully help you understand Sunderer goes behind a rock, I swing a rocket high, then drag down past where he's hiding to make the rocket bank hard. So that's all I'm going to say about controlling the turret. Let's instead talk a bit about placement. Because placement is the only thing that's going to keep you from dying as soon as you deploy this thing. We know it renders at vehicle range, and it's a pretty high threat target, given it can wipe out Sunderers in four shots. So as soon as enemies figure out where those nasty rockets are coming from, they're going to want to deal with you as soon as possible. Generally speaking, there are three placement roles the AV turret will fill. Emergency cover, combat placement, and artillery or sniper placement. Use whichever word makes you feel more awesome. I'm not going to talk about emergency cover as it's covered in the monitor at mastery guide, and if you haven't already seen that, there are a great number of helpful tips for using the standard monitor that also apply to the AV turret. Combat placement is for when you need to get off a shot quickly, for a high burst of damage, and is used in conjunction with your standard weapons and equipment, while artillery placement is based around gauging distance and sitting in your turret almost exclusively. Let's talk about artillery placement first, as it's easiest to understand and less situational. The point of artillery placement is to find a good distance to take on hordes of enemies that can't really fight back. So you're looking primarily for enemy vehicles within render distance, room to adjust and redeploy, preferably a very elevated location, a downward slope that will allow you to compensate for the limited downward field of view the turret has, a place that's out of range or line of sight of snipers, turrets, and tanks, and hopefully somewhere unconventional while flanking your enemies. And this is the prime role of the AV turret. It allows a single engineer to annihilate a horde of enemy vehicles without giving them the ability to effectively retaliate. No other single infantry, vehicle, or anything really can boast this, at least not to the degree that the AV engineer turret can. And you may be thinking to yourself, not ah, Prowlers, you know, Prowlers have incredible range and they can deal amazing damage while anchored, and you'd be completely right. But Prowlers are also extremely obvious targets that take little effort to destroy. Engineers are maneuverable, have a small silhouette, and are generally ignored when there are other targets to pursue. Combat placement, however, is on the other side of the spectrum. When you're in a bio lab and you have an enemy Max chasing you, he's probably going to be very surprised to turn the corner and see half of his health gone thanks to the AV turret you just deployed. This is combat placement. To make the AV turret effective in close to medium range engagements, here are some things you need to think about. Remember that it takes about two and a half seconds to deploy the turret, so after you place the turret you need to be able to fight back or have some cover to hide behind while it deploys, so essentially drop and cover. Make sure it's facing the threat, as turrets have limited ability to swivel left and right, and don't sit in the turret for too long. Fire off a single shot, then jump out of the turret and utilize your weapon. Make sure you have an idea of what you want to kill. If it's a vehicle, it's likely that it can turn around and instigate you. If it's a heavy with a rocket launcher, he can probably instigate you. If it's a hacksaw max that isn't already below half health, then he'll probably walk around the turret and instigate you. So just be very aware of the situation. This may not have been the role that the turret was meant for, but it's a great way to turn the tides of a one-on-one -on -one fight with relative ease as long as your aim isn't off. Those are just two very different ways to take advantage of the AV turret, but in reality you'll often be fighting somewhere between those two extremes. As far as more specific strategies are concerned, here are some things you can also take with you. The first and most important thing I'd like to say is that Sunderers are worth a lot of experience, and it only takes four hits to destroy one. And for what it's worth, it's also important to destroy them because teamwork and whatever whatever. But seriously, if you're looking at a vehicle buffet, a nice juicy Sunderer is the first thing I'd like to put on the plate. Most of the time, if you're well outside of any reasonable attack range, enemies will have no clue where the first shot came from. And if you're fully sorted, you'll likely have two rockets in the air before the first one actually hits. This means that an enemy Sunderer has very little time to react to that damage. And when they do, they'll oftentimes move a little bit, you know, behind a rock where they think it's safe, but it's very likely that you'll still be able to see them, and it's probably the easiest experience you'll ever make. 
For mobile enemies, lead your target just a bit to make sure that the rocket lands dead on. Missing enemy lightning tanks is actually pretty easy to do, especially if they have a rank 3 racer chassis installed. Inexperienced pilots who are just hovering are also pretty easy to deal with as well. Remember that it's just two shots to destroy an ESF, so at the very least you'll likely get a small experience bonus and scare them off. Just be very careful about doing it to Liberators, as they can take a number of hits and are likely to come looking for you. Don't let enemies retaliate. If you're firing on an immobile target and think a sniper is looking for your head, let a rocket loose, put the crosshair on your target, then get out of the turret and into some cover while it cools down. Fire and Forget is an extremely powerful strategy that is honestly the main reason, aside from the damage and range, that this turret is so powerful. Unlike the standard mono turret, which deals damage equivalent to how long you're exposed in the gunner seat, the AV turret doesn't have that weakness. It only takes a second or two of exposure to deal an immense amount of damage, oftentimes not long enough for a sniper to line up a proper shot. Don't be afraid to kill infantry. It's surprisingly easy to one-shot enemy infantry, and this may be due to the actual collision size of the projectile itself, but especially at medium to long range, more than half of your hitbox is covered by a turret, meaning that even if enemies are able to retaliate, they're likely to have a hard time killing you, giving you enough time to abandon your turret and find some real cover. AV turrets will kill an enemy terminal in one hit, which is uh, pretty useful for A, resetting hack terminals back to your faction, then all you have to do is repair them, B, racking up kills towards your next weapon metal, and yes, they do count, and C, stealing experience from allied infiltrators. Speaking of stealing experience, finishing off vulnerable targets is a great way to do just that. Use the AV turret to pinpoint those sickly gazelles and take them out. At the crown, enemy aircraft oftentimes come in for a landing, uh, just to repair the damage. If they're below 50% HP, you're going to dash their hopes and dreams by killing them with a single rocket. And what's more entertaining is that engineers who are repairing a vehicle that doesn't die on the first hit will likely jump inside and then move it to a new landing pad, thinking that they're safely out of line of sight. And most of the time that's just not the case. Use a vehicle to position yourself in hard to reach areas. A flash with turbos or an ESF with an injection seat are great ways to reach higher places. Just make sure you deconstruct this vehicle as it will stand out much more than you will, and any extra attention is always a bad thing. Squad beacons are also a great way to reposition yourself. If you have the cert, you can invite a random person into your group, then set a beacon down and then redeploy onto a better location. Mark your targets often and repeatedly. Losing sight of an especially distant target is really easy to do, especially at night. And remember that you can equip high range optics to spot targets more easily. I'm not going to go much into loadouts with this guide, but putting a high range optic on your weapon can make it easy to spot vehicles in the distance. And if you can't spot while scoped in, just center your crosshair on them while scoped, unscope, then press Q. Smoke launchers can be very useful, especially for closer ranges where a tank can easily turn around and one shot you. If he's in a cloud of smoke, you should be able to pull off a second shot before they are able to find you. And if your target is marked, it's going to show up through the smoke. Why that's still in the game, I really don't know. The last strategy I'd like to mention that I have not done is to roll with another engineer. In every clip in this video, I've been alone and able to do some pretty amazing things with this turret. Imagine if I had some help. I haven't seen organized outfits take full advantage of this yet, but I have no doubt that they'd be incredibly successful. Overall, the anti-vehicle turret is an outstanding, even overpowered addition to the engineer's personal armory, and it's absolutely worth picking up for yourself. Hopefully this video has been a pretty inclusive guide that will help you start wreaking some havoc with the anti-vehicle turret. And if this guide was interesting or helpful, please feel free to like, subscribe, and tell your friends about the channel. 
If you have any crazy kills or experiences with the AV turret, feel free to post a video response or comment below. And if there are some strategies you'd like to share, post them for the entire channel to see. Thanks very much folks, we're all signing off.